Program Director, Kadu Medisa, good evening. Barundi. Barunka Svende, Barundi Macher. Ah, Ndi Matekwan. Ndi Matekwan, I'm saying. Kya Locha, Ndi Abulisa, Ndi Abingelel. So, Program Director, let me first acknowledge that I'm most in the tells of Kadu Medisa, Mungaswag. Also acknowledge, I'm very excited. I see all my colleagues are here. Thank you very much for your attendance. And the results we're celebrating are mainly the work that you have put in the effort. Thank you very much for coming. Let me also acknowledge, I see our partners, Bontatungasani, this is also the work, your work and your contributions that we are celebrating today. Acknowledge CEOs, chairpersons, MTN, Ralevo, uh, also the management from the private sector that is here is joining us and who continue to partner us. And I must thank specifically Muregi, uh, MTN, who sponsored this event. I also want to acknowledge the Director Generals the big one, Director General number one from the presidency and all other Director Generals that are here in, at this gathering. The chairpersons and board members, CEOs and senior management of Umalu Sintetera Committee, also are normally it will be a disaster. So I have to acknowledge you uh, specifically and also Prof, thank you very much for coming. Uh, says the ERC, organized labor that is here, I, I met them earlier. Also, chairpersons of SGBs, thank you very much. The management and <coughs> of governance and leadership in our schools that are here, but most important, I'm greeting you again, uh, our honor, honored guests, I can't even say our children. Today you are the most important people. I don't even know how to address you, but uh, let me acknowledge you. Acknowledge the parents and also the caregivers. So today indeed we are here together, we are gathered here to announce the 2023 National Senior Certificate exams. We are announcing these results, very mournful of the reality that at the heart of any development within basic education is about what learners learn and what we teach in our schools. As we announce the 2023 results, cognizant of the directives from the NDP, which always guides us, and I quote, the NDP directed us as a basic education sector that by 2030, South Africans should have access to education and training of the highest quality, leading to significantly improved learners' outcomes and the performance of South African learners in international standardized tests should be comparable to the performance of learners from countries at a similar level of development within the similar levels of access. Program director, without any shadow of doubt, we can confidently state that in the past 30 years, we have seen progress in the sector. Government has con continuously and consistently implemented policies, programs, and interventions which clearly demonstrate the commitment to expand and enhance basic education through the implementation of your justice, of your social justice principles. Even the allocation that government gives to basic education does com confirm this commitment. We can quickly say, for instance, from the recent State South Africa studies, we are told that 
the number of five-year-olds who attend ECD centers was stood at 40% in 2002, and now household survey says the five-year-olds who are participating are at 90%. It also confirms our statement that children between the ages of seven and 15 years attending institutions since 2009 have reached a universal access that as a country, all our seven to 15 year olds at more than 98% are in education institutions. But also, in terms of completion rates, those who were born in the 50s, that's my age group, <laughs> only 10% of us completed metric. Those born in the 1960s, same category, it's only 10% that completed. Those born in the 1980s, only 30% completed metric. But household survey again says 60% in particular of young black South Africans are completing metric now as we speak in 2021. And I'm sure that more than 60% of young people, in particular black African children, do complete metric. Meaning that the bachelor, for, for instance, the bachelor passes have nearly tripled since 2008. What is also encouraging is that also the age cohorts are being corrected, whereby we now notice or realize that younger people are able to complete metric. And Westgate, as you will see from the results, are even 14-year-olds who are getting distinctions. But that's another story about how a 14-year-old finishes. But what is important for us between 18 years and 20 year old learners are in the majority of learners that complete metric, which for us is also a very important indicator. Program directed has become increasingly evident for education departments the world over not to rely on single large scale assessment metric. So that it's not only the grade 12 that we are celebrating as a sector, we're looking throughout the system how our learners are, uh, track how our learners are, are performing. And we realized when we released the PELS results last year, or earlier this year, we did indicate that it was important to rely not only on international assessment, but also reflect equ equally on valid results from national assessments that are more closely aligned to our curriculum. Despite starting from a relatively low base, the quality of learning outcomes has shown consistent improvement. South Africa has been one of the fastest improving countries in international standardized assessments, including in your teams, your pills, and SACMEC. And the problem, as I say, is that we're starting from a very low base. And although the COVID-19 pandemic temporarily disrupted this upward trajectory. We have put in strategic measures with my colleagues to safeguard the opportunities for learners to take their national senior certificate examinations. So remarkably, the nation achieved more NSC passes and bachelor passes with distinctions than ever in our history. <clears throat> and these are part of the contributions or investments that government has done in the pro-poor package, free nutritional meals, scholar transport, no fees, and also providing books for learners whose families cannot afford to buy them books. The policies we have put in place to identify learners with special needs have helped us to ensure that have helped us to ensure that 90% of 17 to, seven to 15 year old children with disabilities do attend school. We also are proud to say, not only are we making strides for young people, that 30 years back, there would have been almost 37.5 illiterate adults when the household survey released its reports last year, 
it says we stand at 86.4% literacy rate. And you can see from the functionality that our people have become a literate nation. They can transact on their own, on their own. they're no longer signing with an X, and really you can see that there's an improvement in terms of the literacy levels of our people in the country. Yes, indeed, challenges remain, and we're committed to confront them head on and make sure that we deal with them. Our next phase with my colleagues is around the ECD, because we have to strengthen the foundations of learning right from early childhood to the intermediate phase, to the foundation phase, to the intermediate phase, and throughout the system. And we believe that with the imminent approval of the Bella Bill by His Excellency, Great R will be compulsory, thus giving us an opportunity to strengthen the foundations for learning. Back to the exams. <laughs> <laughs> Program director, in terms of the 2023 exams, the scope and size, we presented 8,977 full time learners in this year. And these include part time and full time learners. We produce 162 question papers, printed more than 10 million question, uh, uh, question papers, and had more than, and produced, uh, 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 not more than, uh, more than 6,898 centers were running our exams. We had more than 72,000 examiners with 52 markers, 72,000 invigilators 52, with 52,000 uh, markers. Some of the features of the 2023 exams include a high degree of stability in the system. There was much improved data collection, data analysis, and data feedback processes within the DBE, between us and our provinces. And more importantly, the class of 2023 showed the great test determination, fortitude, and resolve to overcome all odds similarly to the class of 2022. And I think committees can confirm this. Weekends, Saturdays, evenings, we'll find learners in uniforms either going to study or doing extra classes. And for that, we're really grateful. So, the Terra Committee, my Lucy Program Director, we are happy to inform the nation that on Monday, the 15th of January, Prof. Uma Lucy, the, uh, the, the, the chairperson of the board is here, the Prof. It did declare that, and I quote, the examinations were administered largely in accordance with the regulations pertaining to the conduct, administration, and management of the National Senior Certificate. The irregularities identified during the writing and marking of the examinations were not systemic and therefore did not compromise the overall credibility and integrity of the November 2023 NEC exams. So the Executive Committee of Council therefore has approved that I release these results today, so I think it's, they say I can release them. And it is gratifying this year also to show the quality. That this year, Umaluse approved 74% raw marks. When you say raw marks, raw, raw marks of the, uh, 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 that we presented to them. They adjusted upwards 9.1, and you could have done better, Prof, because they adjusted down 16.7% of our marks. 
But in respect to identify irregularities which have been raised by Umadusi, the DBE is required to block the results of all candidates implicated in irregularities, including the candidates who are impl implicated in the alleged act of dishonesty pending the outcomes of the DBE investigation and verification by Umadusi. And we will address Umadusi directives for compliance and submit to Umadusi our improvement plan before the set date of the 15th of March this year. But we also appreciate the, the commendation from Umadusi in the manner which the DBE conducted a successful examination on such a large scale. This class indeed was unique in many respects. It's a cohort, it's our 10th cohort for CAPS. The age profile, as I said, it's a very good age profile that 88.2% 80, of these young, of these uh, uh, learners were 16, were between 16 and 20. We also had part-time learners, again, between 16 and 20%, they were at 47.8%. And this is very important indicator because it gives us indications in terms of studies, maritime science. We also introduced practical assessment tasks for technical meds. Our technical report has all the information on participation and performance in these subjects. Clearly, the support programs and interventions that were produced by DBE, which I'm not going to go with in detail, uh, because I'm sure you want to know the percentage, so get it have been the support programs and interventions that we introduced this year, both for learners and educators, the policy shifts introduced to mitigate the difficult effects of COVID-19, the strengthening of the implementation and monitoring evaluation of the curriculum and assessment practices, and more important, the resilience of this cohort, the stability and the maturity of the system on a rise has really saved and protected us. Again, we are reporting on progress learner, because again, you will recall that we introduced a policy on progression to unclog the system as lots, as lots of learners were unnecessarily repeating the same grade or phase more than once. So the policy of progression, therefore, directed that no learner should repeat a phase more than once. But it doesn't mean that if you produce once, 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 then we progress you. <laughs> there are also concessions. Because some parents come to me to say, my child has been in this grade. Say, let me look at the report about one, 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 to say, I. Actually, if I never see me, we say, let me move by, okay, let me notice, can you tell me, me? So the police on progression and the second chance metric program were introduced to reduce the number of young people who were not in employment, not in education and training, the so-called need. And we will be, and I'm told that registration for the second chance program has started, it's open, and will close somewhere in February. So it is important for our learners, as DM has said, who may want to improve their qualifications, but also for the late bloomers who left school and so can thought feel that I really want to go back to school and this program is meant for them. We again report on learners with special needs because we do strongly believe that an inclusive education system makes an immense contribution towards an inclusive economy to serve an inclusive society. So by providing learners with special education needs access to quality basic education program is an imperative because it's based on a constitutional social justice principles on equity, inclusivity, redress, amongst others. We have, for the past few years, included the learners with special needs in the tracking learner performance in the NHC system. And I can report, and again it's in our technical report, that 5,458 of these learners did enroll 
5,288 of them did right, and 4,581 of them, of these learners, have passed. 2,000 got bachelor, 2,400 got bachelors, 1,360 got uh, diplomas. But these learners with special needs managed to achieve a total of 2,072 distinctions. <laughs> we also report on benefits of the pro-poor policy in the country. And we can say in 2005, schools in quintile one and three accounted for 20% of bachelors. Now, this percentage has increased to 65% contribution of your quintile one to seven schools. And again, we're giving lots of details around that. We've also looked at different ways of increasing efficiency because South Africans are understandably concerned about the efficiency of the system. Your repetition rates, your dropout rates, and keeping learners more in the system. We have put in place policies and programs to reduce excessive grade repetition because it's also grade repetition which discourages children from staying longer and they feel embarrassed and leave school. But we've also put in place mechanisms to assist learners who are struggling to make sure that indeed they are not encouraged from staying. So these days we can confidently say children repeat less and are less likely to be in school into their 20s. But most important of all, they are much more likely to successfully complete a national senior certificate or an equivalent qualification. Because in, indeed, uh, Prima, when I did in Gudu, they just get discouraged. Why won't I? I sang for Nelanga Lindau. Let me leave. So we're really making sure that we make sure that our learners have uh, at the appropriate age. We retain a few of them. We look at throughput rates. Again, in our technical report, Chair, we report on learners who are recipients of social grants to also see how they are performing and how they are succeeding. And I won't go to details in that. We are also reporting on learners from correctional facilities that 137 of them set for exams, 90 of them got bachelors, so 90 of them got bachelors, 34 of them got diplomas, therefore 93.2% of full-time candidates in correctional facilities who wrote the exams passed. They gave us 278 distinctions. We also aggregate our information according to gender. 56.4 candidates were girls, 43.6% were boys, which does indeed call us to continue to look at the boy child. Because we want 50-50, I don't say, we were not saying we want them to perform less as much as we want girls to, pro, to, to proceed. 42% of the girls passed, 39.6% of the boys passed. But in terms of bachelor passes, the boys again surpassed the girls, they passed with uh, <coughs> degrees at 28.6, I need one of my boys room. So the gender roles and they are not making tea for every visitor who's here, so they have space and time. So they got more bachelors than girls. And even in terms of high diplomas, they got more diplomas than girls. So program director, the NDP does recognize that districts are very crucial interface of our basic education system. It helps us to identify best practices, to share information, and provide support to schools. And that's why it always 
heartens or warms my heart when I see colleagues from provinces interacting because we learn from each other, we copy from each other, and that's very healthy for our system. Because the continued growth in the performance of districts is continuously monitored and evaluated by both provincial and national basic education departments. So the reports on the monitoring and evaluation, evaluation in oversight and the analysis of the performances of schools, which are normally presented at the quarterly meetings which I convene with district directors, they continue to assist and enable us to reprioritize support and intervention programs. So in 2023, none of our districts attained anything lower than 60%. There's only one district that is at 70. 19 of our districts are between 70 and 79. And 50, 50, 55 districts performed at 80% and above. And in terms of the top districts, the first one, Premier is Johannesburg West in Gauteng. <laughs> the second best performing district is Muteo in the Free State. <laughs> and the third district is Twanya again in Gauteng. The fourth district is Mkanya Gude in KwaZulu Natal. <laughs> the fifth is First City Derby in the Free State at 89.6. <laughs> and the sixth, Emisang was Gulanga Bingelanga, it is District Gamalu. Usbi Umuche. Ugu in KwaZulu Natal. And the seventh is Tabo Mafutsanyani in the Free State. <laughs> the eighth MEC is Ilembe, Kwasudu Natal. <laughs> the ninth is Gauteng North in Gauteng. <laughs> and the tenth is Kwasudu Natal, Zululand at 87.2. And as you can see, three top districts came from Gauteng, three from the Free State, and four from KwaZulu Natal. It's already giving a tip between the Abasiang Award. The leading district, uh, MEC Eastern Cape, in Alfred and Zoe in the Eastern Cape, it's number one in the Eastern Cape at 85.1. In the Free State, the leading district, the Temuloi, it's 91.2. When I have a good view. In Houghton, the leading district is Johannesburg West. In KZN, Babu Mota is Mkanya Wood. In Limbopo, MC Free State, Kim Memudika at Mupani West. Tobe! I'll give up a hard even cover to Quatam if Nicky won't next to him. So, Sir Kikwatam. And then in Pumalanga, the Tanzin at 81.8. In Northwest is Mujana at 84.2. In the Northern Cape, it's Namakwa at 81.6. In the Northern Cape, let me see you can guess, it's Metro North uh, at 85.9, under Miss Horn. In terms of provincial performances, it's just like that. And the Free State is leading again at 89.0. And 
And I think at this point, we can briefly observe a moment of silence for MEC Tate. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. In the second <laughs> province, I thought it's, for me it was a surprise, I to get a surprise, you've been coming. The second uh, province, KwaZulu Natal. At, at 86.4, with an increased improvement of 3.4. <laughs> Deputy Minister, I thought we were a national uh, deputy. Manje one regional, manje now. How thanks the third province at 85.4. Northwest is the, the fourth at 81.6. Western Cape is, 80, is the, it follows at 81.5. Followed by Eastern Cape at 81.4. But what is very, let me finish reading them, Limpopo num, at number seven, at 79.5, which I must say, MEC is the most improved province this year. It's the most improved province. Followed by the Eastern Cape as the second most improved province. Then Pumalanga achieved 77, 0.0%, which is an increase of 0.2%. And Northern Cape achieved 75.8%, which is an increase of 1.6%. But program director, when I studied this report, th these results, I found them extremely interesting. But for me, an indication of a system that is rising in totality. The difference between KZN and Gauteng, KZN is at 86.4, Gauteng is at 85.4, 1% difference. But what is more interesting is Northwest, Western Cape, and the Eastern Cape. Northwest is 81.6, Western Cape is 81.5, Eastern Cape is 81.4. So all of them is 1% different. So for me, what is heartening and encouraging is a very small percentage margins between the provinces, which really shows a system that is on the rise in its totality, so that you don't have lots of areas of dysfunctionality. So we also, as MECs, approved what we call a provincial inclusive basket, because that's where we want. we want to move away from the percentage passes, because they hide lots of information, which we are supposed to be tracking in terms of the NDP. And our full report has performance in terms of this inclusive basket. Which province is able to get, to keep Learn us more. What are the, uh, 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 for instance, what are the throughput rates? You will find that Stranger Mpumalanga, Western Cape, and Eastern Cape have higher throughput rates than all the other provinces. So kids pass through the system. The other thing also that is curious so, in throughput rates, you have Western Cape, Eastern Cape that have achieved the highest throughput rates, including Pumalang. In terms of performance in meds and provinces which have more learners taking meds, you have KZN leading, 
It was already stated at 47.5, 5% less to get to the 50% threshold. But in terms of achievements in your meds passes, you have the Free State, KZN, and Gauteng achieved higher percentage in terms of pass rates in maths and technical subjects. And you also have more bachelors coming from Gauteng, KZN, and the Western Cape. So Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, and Northwest have higher maths participation, so which means more learners are taking maths. Limpopo and the Free State have higher achievements in terms of accounting. Western Cape, Free State, Gauteng, and Northwest have higher performance in maths and physical science. KZ10 and the Western Cape have the higher passes within distinctions. And that's the basket that we are really looking at to make sure that we don't only report on percentages as we move forward, and we are finalizing that system. Program director, this brings us to the overall results of the 2023 NEC exams. It is important to remind the nation that for the past 10 years, the NEC pass rates have consistently been going up from 60% in 2009 to above 80% consistently in the recent years. And we want to commend the class of 2023 for maintaining this trend, despite big challenges and major challenges that they faced. So the 2023 NEC overall pass rate has reached 82.9% compared to 80.1% in 2022, which is an improvement of 2.8% when compared to last year. And program director, this repre represents the highest passes since the, uh, percentage passes in terms since the, demo the dawn of democracy. We have more bachelor passes from this group and more distinctions coming from these cohorts. <laughs> the number of learners qualifying for a bachelor degree stand at 40.9% from your low 20%. So we've reached 40.9%. We are shy of 10% to reach our NDP goals. In terms of diplomas, 27.2%, so which means there are more bachelors than diplomas. Bachelors are at 40.9, diplomas 27.2, higher certificates 14.8%. And those who pass with the national certificate are at 0.0%. So, just in Busan, I will not buy 0.9 percent. But when you ask her, I won't get to see you. Get separate from Putsaki, I keep well alone. But it is important to note that a total of 447,000 deputy minister higher education are passing in diplomas and bachelors. So, I hope you are ready for them. More than 253,807 have, distinction, have distinctions. And again, what is heartening is to see how rural province and schools in rural areas have performed. And again, you'll get that from our technical report. So, com uh, co uh, <coughs> I almost said comrade. <laughs> Program director. <laughs> Program director. So that's why the military. So program director, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, there's no doubt that the basic education system has begun to reach the desired stability. And I think that's what is very important for us. 
which is very healthy for a large and important system as ours. The unquestionable resilience our school committee has shown against such a devastating pandemic and other challenges such as parodic violence, delivery protests, floods in some provinces, violence, and the general moral decadence amongst our learners such as alcohol and substance abuse cannot go unnoticed and un not mentioned. Clearly, the system cannot survive without the direct involvement of all communities of trust, not only those who are part of the sector, but everyone. As I say, I see lots of partners who've really carried us throughout our journey. The class of 2023 has clearly demonstrated that with all requisite support and intervention programs that most of our partners are uh, uh, providing us, we can make it as a country. We just need to prioritize our interventions on teaching and learning, support the intervention programs, and implement them across the system. So we wish to recognize the confidence our communities have in our public education system. The fact that we had 96% of the candidates who enrolled for the senior certificate, both in public and private schools, registering with the Department of Basic Education, it confirms the confidence our communities have in our system, and we can't let them down. So we, can't, we cannot let our communities down. We must repay their confidence with good teaching and learning outcomes. The high quality passes we have achieved this year, especially the record number of bachelor's and diploma passes, as well as passes with distinction, the fact that none of our provinces are performing at a rate lower than 75%, the fact that none of our districts are performing below 60%, and the fact that our no fee schools have contributed 65% of bachelor passes in the system, showing that there's no room for error in the delivery of government's pro-poor policies. Program director, ladies and gentlemen, as a sector, we must continue to expand our energies and priorities. We must continue with the consolidation of programs, your ECD program. We have to ramp up the performance in all our phases of schooling. We must continue to improve reading proficiency, numeracy of our letters, the three R's. We must work harder but smarter with all our partners to consolidate the gains we have made in the skills revolution through, through the three-stream curriculum model and the fourth industrial revolution. Amongst others, we must continue to strengthen the assessment regime in all our phases of the system and we must continue to work hard with our partners to maintain and sustain the labor peace we have really enjoyed for the past years. So in celebrating the great achievement, the great achievements of the class of 2023, I wish to thank the principals. Yesterday, MEC, a, a Premier went to school where the principal, I'm told the principal arrives at school at half past six. They do. We really have to thank our principals. We have to thank our teachers on whose shoulders the system really rests. Our support staff, and parents for the work they continue to do. Your schools are at the cold phase of basic education delivery. And we have to ensure that programs such as school safety, as well as care and support for teaching and learning, are prominent in what we do in our schools. And we must agree that whatever we do at the school level is what matters most. The future of our learners and the prosperity of our nation are in our hands, and we want to applaud you for the great work you continue to do on a daily basis. I want to thank the president, the cabinet, the portfolio committee for the support they continue to give us, but more important for me is to thank my colleagues from provinces. They really carry the system entirely. I was an MEC, I know in provinces, they rule, you run. Uh, not that we don't run, but I know in provinces to run. I want to thank 
my colleague Dr. Mhaule, thank DG and all the heads of department from provinces. But also most important, as I said, I want to thank our partners, our strategic partners, because they really have carried us to where we are. Our teacher union, school governing body, associations, the disability sector also, which has been keeping us on our toes, our business partners who work directly with us, or also work with us through the NCT led by Dr. Sizwe Masana, and its chair, who is his chairperson, the statutory body, Sumadusi and says, want to thank you, the ELRC, the researchers also who provide us with information, whose work we cannot do without. And I want to also thank our sister departments for also working very well with us. We want to really wish to thank our sponsors, and as I said, Mureki, I uh, have to single out Muregi MTN, and thank you very much for hosting us and supporting us, but also all our partners who work with us. And I want to thank our partners from the private sector who continue to support us in the sector and events. Once again, I want to conclude by thanking the class of 2023 in all our ordinary public schools, in all our independent and private schools. The future is in your hands, and I know I'm preaching to the converted again. We are not the ones that I should be telling to work hard, so I'll be wasting your time because we have proven that uh, we are on top of the pack. So we wish you to really work, continue to work hard, succeed. For those as the MEC or as the deputy ministers, minister had indicated, those who wish to improve their results should enroll for the second chance metric program. Registration for the program has already opened and will close on the 20th of February this year. And we will definitely support you. You won't be on your own. So I wish you all the best in your youthful lives, best careers. And as I said, the country needs you. You are a cohort of young people who will be able to take this country to even greater heights and take our beautiful nation to even greater heights. So heights, I wish you well. And again, God bless and all of the best.